Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Rachel Williams begins now. In Tasmania, the former Prime Minister left an indelible mark on our state's landscape. His intervention in the Tasmanian dams debate shaping our environmental future. Out on the hustings, Bob Hawke's popularity ballooning in the 1980s. His environmental campaigning during the Gordon Below Franklin Dam debate remaining his biggest legacy here in Tasmania. He was a leader who was prepared to take sometimes unpopular decisions because he thought they were right for the future of the nation. He vowed to stop damming of the Franklin River and made it one of the major platforms he campaigned on before becoming Prime Minister in 1983. But his stance was rejected by then Premier Robin Gray, that fight reaching the High Court. Hawke and the environmental movement won. The damming didn't happen. The dam has not gone ahead and there has not been a calamity. It went down in the history books. The decision widely regarded as one of the most significant impacts the former Prime Minister had on our state. I think in this day and age we can look back and see why he was so passionate about it. Addressing business leaders in Launceston, speaking on the nation's economic future and Tasmania's integral role. The dam has been stopped and yet Tasmania's economy is now picking up at least as fast as the other states. The political stalwart also instrumental in the protection of Antarctica. World leaders of the time flexing their muscles, wanting to mine and drill parts of the continent. But that wasn't to happen either under Hawke's watch. Urging other nations to sign the Madrid Protocol for a moratorium on mining in Antarctica. We had a, a, a sudden aurora on full glow here last night and I'm sure that was a tribute by Mother Nature herself. Our Premier today reflecting the, uh, on early Bob memories. Burns. Certainly Bob Hawke uh, was in federal politics at the same time as, as my father and I always got a sense that Bob Hawke was having a bit of fun with him, not just politically but personally. And Bob Hawke, great man, he's a legend. As well as his policies, he's remembered from all sides of politics as personable, intelligent and above all a true blue Aussie larrikin. He was the real deal. Uh, he was authentic before it was a buzzword uh, and uh, he in fact in many ways defines it. Louise Hedger, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's federal election contenders have made their final pitch to voters on the eve of polling day. Premier Will Hodgman talked up Liberal Bass and Braddon candidates warning a shortened government would not align with Tasmania's priorities. This is an important election, it's going to be very close and this election could be decided here in Tasmania in the seats of Bass and Braddon. Labor Bass MP Ross Hart is urging voters to support him on health policy. They need to give me another go, they need to re-elect me as the member for Bass to be part of a shortened Labor government. A shortened Labor government will invest in our health system. Polling closes tomorrow night at 6. A man who bashed a 90-year-old widow in a drug-induced rampage at Invermay will spend at least two years behind bars. Shane Allen Weldon pleaded guilty to 12 charges, including causing grievous bodily harm. This is where Shane Allen Weldon seriously injured two people just over a year ago. On April 4, 2018, the 40-year-old was under the influence of ice and short on money. He walked into the backyard of an Invermay home where he was confronted by a painter. He asked to jump the fence into a neighbouring property. When the painter said no, Weldon struck him with a hammer. He took a set of keys from the 66-year-old, letting himself into the property. Once inside, he hit a 90-year-old woman with his arm, leaving her with facial fractures and bleeding on the brain. Soon after, he fled to another house, where he panicked, took a shower and was found by officers dripping wet in a toilet. As they tried to arrest him, Weldon became violent, punching an officer and trying to take a firearm. He was only stopped after capsicum spray was used. Today, the court heard the 90-year-old made a remarkable recovery, but the other victim still faced difficulty with logical thinking. Justice Alan Blow said Shane Weldon's crimes had left a lasting impact on his victims. He was sentenced to five years and six months behind bars, with an on-parole period of two years and nine months. Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News.
Welcome back. Building a new life after serving the nation is often a challenge for defence veterans. But today that job was made a little easier when a group of big hearted tradies picked up the tools to make it happen. Friday afternoon in Sheffield and an army of tradies is hard at it. Back decks, walls and gardens all in a day's work. But these builders and fitters aren't charging a cent. They have just rocked up and surprised me to do um, to f help finish off my renovation so that I can move back into my house. Alicia Blot is a 15-year army veteran from Afghanistan and the Bandarache Tsunami Response. She's just spent the last month away from home getting treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder. But fellow army veteran Philip de Bomford had an idea. What we've done is um, just a bit of a ring around and see if we get some tradies together. And uh, with very little effort, we've got pretty much every tradie in Sheffield on site to um, give Alicia a bit of a hand to get her renovations up and running. Yeah, we just jumped at it and thought we'd come up, get all the guys on board and give them a hand. Now it's all happening. You got your 10 mil there, Todd, up the top. The fences are getting a coat of paint. There's even going to be a new wood heater. This means the world to me to be able to get back home and uh, settle and um, be in my own home. The aim is simple. You know, it's, a, it's an important message. We've just got to look after each other and, and um, make sure we've got each other's back. And what better way to see out the day with a barbecue and a cheer. Hey! Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. A handful of dinosaurs will soon roar back into life at a new exhibition opening in Launceston. And there was a special guest getting a first-hand look at preparations. Jurassic Park star Sam Neill. This looks like a metaphor for me as, a, as an actor, you know. I think that's why I'm standing in front of that beast. Organisers are confident the show will be a hit with the kids once it opens at the start of June. I'm hoping lots of eight-year-olds are going to lose their minds because our permanent exhibition on dinosaurs is one of the most popular things for kids in the permanent exhibit. So actually having them move and make noises will bring it up to the next level. The distinguished New Zealand actor is in Launceston for this weekend's Breath of Fresh Air Film Festival. Members of Tasmania's Girl Guides are in the midst of their busiest month, selling biscuits door to door across the state to raise money for its programs. One member in particular being remembered this month for her years of service to the cause. For Anne Crummy, being part of the Girl Guides has been a way of life, first joining up at just nine years of age. It's just been wonderful over the years. Here working alongside other members, preparing to sell the famous biscuits for the rest of this month. And that's the beauty of it, that everybody knows they're coming and then they're a treat once a year. The drive now in its 61st year, fundraising for the range of programs run for members. For some, these biscuits and the process of selling them is life changing. Useful because they get to handle money and plan um, the selling campaign and all those skills, as well as being able to interact with the public. There's 800 members here in Tasmania, ranging from five years old to 100, and their door is always open for more. Just learn to meet and mix with a whole range of different people, and you learn to value everybody's abilities and all they have to offer. And if the guides come knocking over the next couple of weeks, just remember it could be your only chance to stock up on the famous biscuits till next year. Louise Hedger, 7 Tasmania News. To the TSL and North Hobart will have some added incentive up against Glenorchy this Sunday with two of the D's at best set to receive lifetime memberships to the club. But after bringing Lauderdale's undefeated record to an end, the Pies will be out to rain on the parade. They've been two of the club's most loyal and consistent performers and this weekend Hugh Williams and Oliver Divinito will be rewarded with lifetime memberships when they run out for game number 150. And after taking it right up to the reigning premiers, the young Ds are hopeful they can provide the upset over the more heavily favoured Pies. So we're in a null losers, we can't just go out there and just expect it's going to happen. We set our standard last week so we need to make sure we ensure that we have that standard for four quarters again on Sunday. 
Despite a horror run with injury, the Pies are flying high off the back of an 11-point win over Lauderdale. But coach Paul Kennedy says his men certainly won't be taking the trip to North Hobart Oval lightly. It's not really time to reflect on what that win was. It's more we've got to knuckle down and be just as hard at it again this week. Like if we don't have the same approach, so every chance, you know, North Hobart take the four points. And following a desperately needed win over Clarence, the Tigers now had the chance to put the rest of the competition on notice with a win over the reigning Premiers at Utah Stadium tomorrow night. Yeah, we fought back from a little bit of adversity that, um, you know, we had to. So, and that's what, as a, as a young team and a team wanting to be, become better in the competition, you need to do that. And I think it's a really good sign of growth. It was a really good blueprint watching North Hobart and the way they went about it. So, yeah, there's definitely bits of that that we'll, we'll be trying to replicate on Saturday night. Still on soccer and Olympia will have the chance to snatch top spot on the MPL ladder from Devonport tomorrow in what's shaping up as one of the matches of the season. While Australian Netball League action returns to the state this weekend with the Tasmanian Magpies keen to continue their hot run of form. The sides have met once this season, back in round two, when Devonport claimed the 1 0 win at Valley Road. But Olympia boasts a home ground advantage this time around. Um, we probably didn't. We didn't challenge them enough when we went up there and, and we're disappointed with that so we want to do better this time. The Warriors sit just two points shy of the ladder leading strikers and despite being unbeaten in their past eight matches, the club believes its best football is still to come. Pushing each other and it's, it's encouraging and it's positive so I think once we get those, uh, once we get all the pieces together I think we'll be uh, yeah, a force to be reckoned with I think. To netball and it's the south of the state's turn to witness the Tasmanian Magpies in action when they take on the Southern Force at the Hobart Netball Centre over two weekend matches. And the Pies are running hot, sitting second on the ladder with four wins from their opening four matches of the a &L season. We haven't played at Hobart yet so it'll be really good for the Southern crowd to come along to a game. Um, and yeah, it's nice for the Hobart girls to get a home crowd as well. A team desperate to capture some winning form of their own is the Launceston Tornadoes. And star import Brittany Hodges is adamant it's not far off, despite the Torns dropping their past three matches in a row and lingering near the bottom of the NBL 1 ladder, which is two wins from eight games. We have some young bodies, so that's always a challenge. But um, I think we're just waiting for the right moment where we just click. And um, I think that's coming sooner than later for sure. The Torns clash with the Albury Wodonga Bandits tipped off at Elfin Stadium a short time ago. Good evening. Temperatures ranged from minus 2 at Liawini to our top the day of 19 at Friendly Beaches. Hobart, Launceston and Burnie all 17 and Devonport 16 degrees. Campania and St Helens 18, Smithton and the Island 17 today. Lowhead, Ooze and Strawn all 16 degrees. The western and northwesterlies brought cloud to the west, south and far northeast of the state. Clear skies over the, most of Tasmania though. Cloud with a cold front extends from south of Western Australia to our southwest. That is followed by cold unstable air ahead of the next high. Convective cloud is over parts of New South Wales, Queensland and the Territory. Tomorrow a cold front will move east of the state allowing a high to extend to ridge our way. A low in front will intensify over the bite. Winds west to south westerly as strong as 10 to 20 knots and maybe 25 knots over the southeast at times. Swells to 4 metres in western and southern waters. Tomorrow in Hobart, partly cloudy, a top of 17 degrees. Perfect football weather for the Kangaroos and the Swans. Maydina, a light morning shower, 15 the high, 15 also for Oatlands, but mostly sunny in the centre of the state. 19 for Launceston, an early fog. 18 for Devonport, a sunny day. Liawini, one overnight, a top of 12 tomorrow. Burnie, 18 degrees, mostly sunny. Light showers though for Strawn, 16 the top there. Marawar, 16 degrees as well. St Helens tomorrow, 18 degrees along with Swansea. Mostly sunny for Orford as well and 17 degrees. On Sunday, a fine day across the state after morning fog patches. Rain developing over the northwest on Monday, extending elsewhere in the afternoon. And on Tuesday, a few showers over the north and west with winds easing in the afternoon. An unusual frost for Perth ahead of a sunny day there. A little cloudy for Adelaide, a sunny 20 in Melbourne, fine for Sydney as well on 23, a possible shower for Brisbane. Hobart, 14 and cloudy at the moment. Launceston, partly cloudy and 12 and 13 right now in Devonport. I know you've got to read the news over the weekend, Rachel. So tonight, dose up on brandy and lime. It mightn't work, but it'll be fun trying. It does sound that way. Thanks for that, Murph. Well, that's all your news for now. I'll be back later with updates. Thanks for joining us. Good night.